what we're talking about in the caffeine cycle is that um, uh, uh, caffeine-based products uh, give us, so teas and coffees and carbonated drinks, give us a hit of, of caffeine. Caffeine is a very strong, uh, f strong drug and it does, has a number of, uh, of um, central and peripheral effects. Centrally, it tends to wake you up, tends to switch you on, um, but it also reduces the perceived um, level of exertion around exercise. Um, and in fat cells, what it does is it helps mobilize fat to be used as energy. So caffeine is a very, very useful drug, a very, very useful drug. It's really useful to be used, for example, pre-exercise, um, if you want to encourage your body to burn body fat. So that's a very useful time to use it. Um, however, the habit that many people have of having five or six or eight or ten cups of coffee a day, often very strong coffee, coffee, the, 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 your body gets used to that caffeine at that stage. And remember, the other thing that caffeine does is it, it squeezes your adrenal glands to release some adrenaline. And that's, one, that's part of the switch on that it's doing. So it's, it switches you on by getting you ready for action by causing a little bit of an adrenaline release. Now, if you're doing that throughout the day, this has a number of, neg a number of negative effects. Firstly, your body gets very used to having all this adrenaline, which is not good for it. Um, so you're squeezing your adrenals and eventually your adrenals can become worn out. So you can, get, you can struggle with... Um, with managing stress as your adrenals become more and more worn out. It can affect your sleep because obviously adrenaline is the fight flight hormone about, is about getting you ready to run around and so forth. And if you're doing this all, all day and getting a, a large amount of, of adrenaline being released, then that can affect your sleep cycles. Caffeine itself is also incredibly addictive. By the time you're having four or five cups of coffee a day, then you will have a proper little caffeine habit going on and you'll be one of these people who doesn't function in the morning until you've had your first hit of coffee. When, uh, when you, if you think about withdrawing caffeine from somebody who's addicted and within this caffeine cycle and so forth, then what I always recommend is that you reduce it slowly. So if you have eight cups of coffee a day, go from eight to four cups of coffee a day in the first in instance and then do that maybe for three or four days or even a week and then reduce it to two cups of coffee a day then to one cup of coffee a day before thinking about stopping. If you go from eight to zero overnight, many, many people will get, a, on about the third day, an absolutely shocking headache. And, and actually, you can have full body symptoms where you feel like you've, um, where you're coming down with a bad virus. And I have seen people admitted to hospital with the signs of caffeine withdrawal. So caffeine withdrawal can be really, really pronounced. And it can occur with as little as three or four cups of coffee a day that you can get a formal caffeine withdrawal. Um, and it's not uncommon people get this, for example, when they go on holiday. So they're busy, busy, busy all week and so forth. And they've worked really, really hard for months and months and months. And they go on holiday for a week. When they go on holiday for a week, they stop drinking coffee because it's not part of their habit. They get up in the morning, there's fresh orange juice for breakfast, and then they're going to the beach and you know, having other drinks and so forth. And maybe they don't have a coffee in the same way as they normally do. And under those circumstances, I've seen people from holiday be admitted to hospital with a caffeine withdrawal. So caffeine-based drink, caffeine's fine. It's a fantastically useful drug. Um, if you consume lots of it, the other thing is the beneficial effects around exercise are lost. So if I want my athletes to have the benefits of using caffeine either pre-training or pre-performance because you're allowed to take caffeine-based products around your performance as well, um, it, if you want them to do that and they drink six cups of coffee a day, you'd have to give them so much caffeine to have an effect that actually they... they, they become jittery and when they become jittery like that then they're less likely to be able to catch a ball or kick the ball properly so they make more accidents or they become less coordinated because they've got too much caffeine on board. So caffeine is a very very important drug, it's very very useful and it's great to have it occasionally but if you have a large amount of it it'll have a lot of negative uh, impacts and so it's much better to hydrate with pure water uh, which doesn't have any of those side effects, and use caffeine as an occasional thing. So maybe you'll use it um, as a drug because you want to switch yourself on. Maybe you'll use it pre-training and so forth. Maybe you just really enjoy your afternoon cup of tea. Well, pick the caffeinated drink that you really enjoy and by all means have it, but try not to have six or eight cups of, cup of, uh, cups of coffee a day.